Welcome to the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Nedling. You are about to discover impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you, so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Be sure you visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now tune in, get ready, and enjoy the journey of emerging as a leader of exception in the 21st century. Welcome everyone to the Find Your Leadership Confidence podcast. I'm your host, Vicki Nethling, coming from Roswell, Georgia. And the goal of this podcast is to bring topics and guests that will empower you to take your business or your life to the next level. I'm so excited to have my guest, Carrie West. So let me tell you a little bit about Carrie. Carrie attended the American Film Institute. It was due to her love of stories and storytelling that made her launched to this new degree or new career sorry stories were how she comforted herself in the madness and terror of her house when she was born she endured trauma and panic from the moment she took her first breath as a child her family rejected her she learned how to fend for herself sometimes with near catastrophic results. And yet, Carrie is now a thriving, successful adult. Her book is the story of making peace with people who, as her family, should have protected her, but didn't. Through understanding and healing, she built an amazing, extraordinary life In telling her story, she wants to inspire others that they can overcome anything. The name of our podcast is, as you see on the screen, those that are watching, Memoir of an Ordinary Person, which is her upcoming book. Please join me in welcoming Carrie West. Hello, Carrie. Hi, Vicki. Good to see you. You as well. Been, been looking forward to this interview. You have such an interesting story. Very, uh, I don't know, it's, it's almost heartwarming to know that you could go from where you were to be who you are today. That it's such a, a, a survivor story that people need to hear, especially people that tend to think there's nobody understands me or nobody's been through what I've been through. So let's just um, get into a little bit about your story. And then, um, well, first let's ask that simple question. Where do you live now? (laughs) I am. And now it's amazing to me. I, I wake up every day and I'm just mesmerized. I live in a beautiful home in Santa Barbara, California. And the image you see is actually drawn from one of the views from our window. And and to think that this is where I am now after growing up in a house that was that side of the tracks, as some Mm. people say, and to to sometimes go without food. Wow. You know, we didn't have food on the table. So to, to go from that to this beautiful, beautiful view this beautiful home is amazing to me. It's absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite places in California is Santa Barbara. Oh yeah. Beautiful, beautiful place. So you have such a great story in terms of, you know, what you went through and So most of my questions deal with now, but I think for people to understand now, if you could just give a few pieces of that early life that you lived, that would be helpful, I think. Sure, sure. Uh, And and it's surprising to me how common the story is. Mm -hmm. How, you know, we all, 
the famous word when I was growing up was your dysfunctional family. Yes. How many of us can relate to having a dysfunctional family, <laughs> whatever that means and to whatever degree. Yeah. And I, I'm a firm believer now, it was wild, but I'm a firm believer now that we really aren't our background. We are the people we are now. And I was born into a family. My parents were first generation Americans. Mm -hmm. Women didn't mean much. And I grew up in an era where women were seen and not heard. I was I wore little dresses to school until high high school, senior high school, before we could wear comfortable clothes. And you know, girls had a certain standard that didn't apply. Mm -hmm. So I had a I had parents who didn't value any of their female children and they certainly didn't value me uh, mom rejected me when the nurse even tried to hand me over to her when i was born she said get that piece of you know what away from me and people will say to me how do you know you, you were a baby but she would tell that story yeah. <laughs> she she was almost like she bragged about it mm -hmm. uh, and she wouldn't feed me. And that's one of the times I died because I was so hungry and emaciated that I found when I could waddle around and walk around, I was a little over a year old. I found some leftover popcorn that my parents and my older brother and sister had been eating. And I just put it, stuffed it into my face and I couldn't chew it. So, you know, what happens? It just got, it blocked up my entire digestive system. And if it weren't for, and mom just was happy, I wasn't crying and screaming. I was listless. I was bloated. And by some miracle, the doctor decided to do a house call. I, I think he suspected something of my mother, who I, I later found out had mental challenges and her own mm -hmm. emotional problems. Um, and I think he suspected it. And he came by and saw the shape I was in. And I, I won't go into what he did to save my life, but he saved my life and came by every week with food and, and proper food and fed me. So that's what kept me alive. And, and I learned to fend for myself. I, mm -hmm. I learned to feed myself. And when my younger sister came along, I would make sure she had peanut butter and jelly sandwiches when mom wouldn't feed us. So, so there's, and, and unfortunately that is more common than you think, mm -hmm. you know, women have challenges and don't know what to do about it. And that breaks my heart more than anything else is it shouldn't be that way. Wow. And, and I had read your opening chapter of your book and had listened to your story. And I just thought, Oh my goodness, you know, um, um, just, you know just, Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say it, it just, made me want to have you on even more and i cannot wait to read the entire book because it was so well written that first part thank you thank you well it's it's time we all learn i think that you can move beyond whatever that first part of your life was and that's the part that that i i really work with people on is you can let that go with love and, and grace and integrity and forgiveness and gratitude. Because honestly, I look at that, the, my parents both died years ago. I was in my early twenties when they died. And I look at it now with such gratitude for them because they gave me the determination and the will to go on this journey and uncover what happened so that I could live the life I have now mm -hmm. and, and forgive them and give peace to them and, and actually thank them for, for what they showed me. And they showed me my tremendous amount of determination and how I could be happy. And, and there were happy moments. I mean, mm -hmm. the holidays were happy. My mom turned out <laughs> as much as she didn't want to feed me. She was a brilliant cook. She could bake like you wouldn't believe, and people loved her baking. Mm -hmm. it, it, she just had, she had her own mental and emotional stories that prevented her from being the best person she could be. Mm -hmm. and, and I would like to encourage everybody to end the cycle that keeps us in that story 
that we have to be a certain way. Yeah. Does that make Which, sense? It does. You know, whenever I read your story, I thought of one of the things Darren Hardy teaches in the, the hero's journey is about your character diamond and how all of those flaws in a diamond as they're sh shined and carved at, they become this precious stone. And so your life, you could have gone a different direction, but you chose all of those flaws and, and rough edges to create a character so strong that you could be who you are today. So I, I just, I just loved your story. Thank you. Thank you. But you said something really important there. You said a few things that are really important. First of all, it's the flaws that, that bring the beauty out mm -hmm. and creating a character, creating mm -hmm. the character, making yourself the star of your story. Because mm -hmm. so many times we, you, we blame other people or we say, oh, if only I would have had, mm -hmm. I, I, I have a whole chapter on the if onlys of life, if only mom, if only dad, if only school, if only I would have had gotten that first date, I would have been happier with little, with boys and men and dating. Mm -hmm. if, if you can get beyond that, and that's, that's the, the message I have is moving beyond the, these stories to find and, and accepting your own flaws. There's a Cohen song that says, um, if it weren't for a broken heart, how would the light shine through? Yeah, yeah. I always say that. I said, you, you have to know pain to know joy. You, you have yes. to know, you know, I, I hate this to know how much you can love. Yes, something. and darkness adds depth to the light. Mm, yes. The yes. shadows that create mm. these amazing photos and depth of yeah. us. So otherwise it'd be flat. Yeah. And, and, and I don't want to encourage that. It, it's how can you, how can you open up to the light? Because we have both. We all have both. <laughs> it's not one of my questions, but that made me think you as um, someone that's in the, has been with the film industry, uh, understands photography. And I think what you said was so brilliant because when you do take a look at a picture, even me in my coaching of people to be comfortable in video, I, I have to tell them to come out of the, into the light, you know, that don't be in the shadows because of how it portrays you and blocks you from being trusted because you're in the shadows. Yes. And, and, and look at how I, I'm looking at your face and this beautiful frame around your face from where your hair is. It's a little bit of darkness, but that's how we yeah. can, how it outlines your the beautiful face and and gives it definition. Yeah. Yeah. So so my point is just don't be afraid of it. Yeah. Accept it. Accept Embrace. It. Embrace it. Yes. Even better. Embrace it. All right. So let's talk about 2022. You left corporate to pursue yep. your dream. It's not always easy to walk away from uh, the cushiness. <laughs> I, for one, can attest. <laughs> so um, talk about that journey. Uh, you know, I've, I've been leading groups and speaking to groups for a long time. It, it's Whether it's training people, because I, I have absolutely no problem speaking to a group of people. Mm -hmm. And... People would always say to me afterward, how did you do that? How did you communicate to each of us as if we were individuals? Yeah. You didn't use you didn't use corporate speak, you didn't use business speak, you didn't even use film speak. If I was launching a movie, I never talked about the film production value. And, <laughs> and I said, I I believe the best way to communicate is by speaking a normal everyday language that people understand it. And after one of these sessions in 2022, it was the beginning of 2022, there was a, a chief operating officer in the meeting, and I knew he was there. He was observing, but he was observing for his group that I was um, doing a strategic session with. And he said, who are you? <laughs> he said, I'm Gary West. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> you know who I am. <laughs> so he said, no, no, no. Do you, do you do this for a living? And I said, 
Yeah, I, no, he said, I mean, lead groups. You've really, I've never seen people in this group talk as much as you have them talking. And so that's what started me thinking that how much I love that, how much I love communicating. I, I love getting people to show me who they are. It's fascinating to me when they show me who they are. And I hope that I make them feel comfortable that they, they trust me and they are willing to be who they are. Mm -hmm. That's the whole basis of communication. Mm -hmm. I, I know I'm not like anybody else I meet. I know we all are different, mm -hmm. I, you know, but I, I don't, I don't, and in our, in our world today where it's so much divisiveness, yeah. I, I just want to let people know, I don't care if you believe what I believe or I don't believe what you believe. Can't we just have a normal conversation? We're going to be stuck on this airplane for five hours. Can we find something to talk about or, or not? But, but that's the point. And so yeah. that conversation with Bill just got me thinking that if I was going to do this, you know, COVID opened us up to Zoom and it made our reach more viable. Yeah. And I'm very fortunate that it's taken off. I've had a lot of people encourage me to write the book um, who have loved the story. People just, just do not believe that I had those really distraught first years where I think about it sometimes. And I think, how did I make it? Yeah. How did I make it through those years? So I carry this picture of me that I have that happened about two months after the doctor saved my life. I carry it with me mm -hmm. to remind me that little girl who's still present in me in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And I carry it with me to remind me about her and to thank her every day for her. She was the courageous one. She was yeah. the strong one who lived through that. You know, I know not everyone thinks of the same higher power but but I always think that when there's this life changing moment you know or defining moment and you survive it then God or whatever higher power you believe in has a has a position and a place for you and a job for you and it's mm -hmm. up to you to fulfill that and you are doing that and and I do believe we all have a purpose or a destiny mm -hmm. or, yeah. or a fate, I, mm -hmm. whatever word you want to use for it. I, I believe we have so much more in common as human beings. And I think we were designed to go after that. Mm -hmm. I, the one thing that does sadden me as adults is we have forgotten to use our imagination. Mm -hmm. And we have forgotten to dream. Mm -hmm. We have forgotten that we can still have dreams. Mm -hmm. No, I don't care how old you are and I don't care what you do. You can still dream. Yeah. And I think that's also a whisper or if you get this nudge that you're being mm -hmm. called to dream about something, I think that's also a whisper from that higher power or source or God or however, mm -hmm. however you call it. So I agree. It's, it's trusting that and listening and, and, going for it so we can talk a little bit more about the you know you help individuals who are ready to or think they're ready to live a life of their dreams um, you know they've they've gone and taken the chance taken the risk and and didn't listen to all the other people around them that told them they couldn't have that dream or they couldn't even dream yeah. you help them how what is it that you do to start to give them the ability to believe in themselves enough to dream again I, I like to take them on this journey of the aha moment <laughs> I call it the aha moment and i'll give you a great example of it when i my husband's a musician and he he plays with a lot of, of great musicians. And one of the women he plays with was invited to play with the Chicago Symphony. And, and she was excited, but I could tell how scared she was. Mm -hmm. So I said, would you like to work with me? We had gone through a couple of practice sessions and she 
she was talking about this and I said, would you like to work with me? And she said, okay. <laughs> and I, and I talked to her about it and I said, what, what happens when you, you, you know how it works, you know how to go mm -hmm. on the stage, you know, the green room, when you prep, you know, when you prep, prep your instrument, you know, when you walk on your stage, where does the fear come up? Mm -hmm. And the fear, she told me where the fear came up. And I said, so let's look at that fear. What's it about? And it turned out it was something to do in, in her childhood growing up. It was her of family. <laughs> of and, course. And, and when she, I could see the difference in her when she realized it. It was like her shoulders dropped. She sat back and she went, oh my gosh. I'm still holding on to that. That happened ages ago. Mm -hmm. and I'm still holding on to that. And... She went to, I mean, two weeks later, she was in Chicago. She did the performance. She called me afterward and she said, I have never performed as well as I did tonight. I felt so free and so connected to the instrument and to the music. And, and she's a principal clarinetist with some, some symphonies out here in the mid, in, in coastal California, mid coast. And she just said, I've never played as well and never felt so connected to the music and so free because you know as a creative person you got to get out of your way and let this mm -hmm. stuff flow you know you practice and practice and practice and I don't care if your creativity is writing music or even being creative in business business is just as creative but when you get in the flow of it you know when you're you're flowing mm -hmm. on all cylinders so when she just, but when I saw her to witness how her body changed mm -hmm. when she went oh my gosh and it can be that quick it can mm -hmm. be that fast that you break through yeah. and and you can let these things go it's it's understanding what is that what is it what is it what is it why is this scaring me i'm a grown mm -hmm. person why is this bugging me now you know, and a lot of times I know with my work and with people that that fear is a failure, a rejection. And again, comes from fail, failure and rejection that, that you've had from when you were younger. But yeah. whenever you do think, you know, I'm not going to die from this if it goes wrong. I, 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 what's the worst that could happen? I mean, that is the freeing piece. That yeah. is when you are the best is whenever yep. you don't give a crap <laughs> you no, just exactly. do just let the music flow from you if you will yep and you know what the greatest fear is all of those fears you just listed mm -hmm. speak to our fear of the unknown yeah yeah this was going to be her first time on a stage with people that she had put on a pedestal because my gosh the chicago symphony it's world renowned yeah. They, re they do recordings, they're in movies, they do everything. It, so it was the fear of the unknown. How am mm -hmm. I going to fit in with this group? Are they going to accept me? I don't know anybody. Yeah. So, how many, how, well, how many people listening don't leave their current job, whatever it might be, because they don't know if the worst, the next job, you know, it's like, well, the next job could be worse than this. <laughs> well, do you, you know, my one of my one of my parents' favorite phrases was "better the devil we know." Yeah, and that's and that see these little phrases get stuck in our psyche, mm -hmm. and that's the same thing with well, it's bad here, but at least I know how to navigate the bad. Mm -hmm. How what's it going to be like in the new environment? Mm -hmm. yeah. How can I trust that it's not going to be worse? Or and that's why a lot of companies will incentivize by saying, "Well, I'll pay you." you know, double what you're making today, because at least, well, maybe if I'm making more money, I'll, I'll take that risk. But I, 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 I know exactly what you're mm -hmm. saying. Yeah. Because it, it, you know, a lot of times it is your manager that is causing you the problem. It's not what you do. And, and maybe if in another circumstance, that person will be better and you will blossom and you will grow and you will just out, be outstanding in in this yeah. doing what you were doing today and did, did i i don't know if i shared this with you when we spoke mm -hmm. i i work with trauma and ptsd because in mm -hmm. my book is a whole chapter about ptsd because i still get triggered and suffer with that because mm -hmm. like the survival mode can kick mm -hmm. in any time 
I, I accept it in my life now and I don't, it doesn't send me into that great abyss anymore, but I, I have a client who gave me permission to put it in the book and he was bullied as a child mm -hmm. and really smart kid used to love school and he was bullied and the kids called him grace when he tripped they called him grace and they would say here comes grace and come on grace let's let's go out to the playground and so you know when you're when you're nine and ten years old that that affects you so here he was in his 40s and doing really well at a job loved his job was great and then he got a new boss and her name was grace Oh, and he could not figure out why oh, he, no. was so, he was so upset about it and oh. he didn't like her you know she's this and she's mean or she wants me to put in time and she he had all these things that he didn't like about her and he ended up leaving the job and took another job that was okay he left a job he really loved because this new boss grace was awful and she did and she did and she did and you know, he came to work with me and said, I'm just so unhappy in this job. And I said, well, why'd you leave? And he's like, oh, Grace. And we, we researched, it took a little bit longer to find this one because we mm -hmm. didn't talk about trauma. A lot of people don't, don't acknowledge that they're traumatized and don't want to move, don't want to look at that. Mm -hmm. Once we figured it out that Grace was a perfectly fine boss, he was terrified being around her he was so nervous that he couldn't be himself. Mm -hmm. He lost his confidence. Yeah. He lost his, his ability to function because mm -hmm. it was taking him back to this time that he hadn't healed. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, he's, he's doing very well again now, but that just that awareness that he had this story playing on a tape loop in his head about mm -hmm. grace isn't that amazing how something like that can can affect you yep it will paralyze you sometimes it does it does and mm -hmm. and it he had the courage though to look he had the courage to want to find that out mm -hmm. and that's why now he's he's he has since left that job and he is now thriving again and actually got a great promotion he emailed me a couple weeks ago he just oh, got awesome. a great promotion and he's doing really well but it's that breakthrough moment when you can figure out that one thing, because it, it bothered him that he lost his confidence with that woman mm -hmm. really did. And, and it was affecting him in his new job. Mm -hmm. And he, he really said, I gotta, I gotta sort this out. I gotta figure out what's gone on because he loved his work. He loved what he was right. doing. So we're zooming through the time here. I wanted to just ask you to share a little bit about the program you have from ordinary to extraordinary um, talk about that program and and what is the outcome that someone that is involved in that will expect or should expect absolutely well the first thing i do is i i bring i encourage you to uncover your inner child and discover your imagination again because one of the things that that the gentleman i was just telling you about is he, he did have a dream of a, of a happy career. And we forget about that. We get so entangled with, well, I've got a mortgage, I've got college tuition, I've got kids, or I've got a pregnant wife, or I've got a leave, you know, we, we get caught up in the day to day that we forget to have a dream. We forget our imagination. And imagination is what got us to adulthood. You know, we dream of being a scientist. We dream of being a doctor. We dream of marriage with families. You know, we have these dreams, but we forget about them. And so the first thing is I encourage my clients to develop their imagination and to practice it. Even if your goal, you know, this one person was really struggling and his, his dream was to lose 30 pounds. He felt like he didn't have the body he did when he was in his 20s. And it's like, okay. So I want you to visualize that. I want you to imagine your dream that you have this, this great body again, it, even if that's your dream. So that's the first step is getting your imagination fired up and then developing at least three dreams that would be important. Then we find the, the, pri the priority, the top one. And then we start looking at the stories around it. Like I said, with, with the, symph the clarinetist, her dream was to play with big symphonies around the world. She had forgotten that. And we found out what was holding her back. But once we know the dream, we find out what 
you know, with the gentleman with losing weight, I, I knew he was carrying a weight of something on his shoulders. And he, once we found that out, he, he was motivated again to go to the gym. I'm not saying he woke up and he was 30 pounds lighter. No, but he was motivated to go to the gym and he's working on it now and he knows it's a process, but, but that's it. Once you figure out what the dream is, then we go into why not, why don't you have it? And when we can get to that aha moment, then you get on a plan to, to living your dream life and finding out it, some people we we actually go into rewriting the story and i'll even have them start off with once upon a time <laughs> there was a, a young man who had put on too much weight and had a dream of of fitting into a beautiful tux for his daughter's wedding mm -hmm. and and when you can use that it really keeps sparking your imagination and then you'll set goals because it becomes fun again. Yeah. And when you can add more enjoyment to your life, it doesn't feel like a chore. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel like work. It doesn't feel like something else on my to-do list. I'm already overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. It has to be fun. That's why I do these podcasts. <laughs> exactly. If, if you mm -hmm. didn't love it, mm -hmm. So it is time now for rapid fire. I have just a few questions for you. How right. did your time in the American Film Institute help you connect better with people? Well, you have to connect with people. You, it's a creative process and every day you have to put aside everything else to, to work with people to come up with a common goal, a common production actually, and literally mm -hmm. a production. So what do you think we need to do differently now to live that happy and fulfilling life. Stop being so hard on ourselves. Yes. No, seriously. Let's. I let's agree. It's <laughs> like some stuff. Good, good. We we have to lighten up. We have to mm -hmm. find the humor and mm -hmm. some of our foibles that got us here. Look, I could sit here and keep blaming my parents till till what the day whatever. But to what point? They're yeah. gone. Yeah. Spilt milk. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's, um, it's just one of those things. Uh, it's the mindset, you know. And we are always saying things to ourselves that we would never allow anyone else to say to us. Thank you. Would you be friends with you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the question. Would you be yeah. friends with you? if you treated, if your friends treated you the way you treat you. Yeah. And I think sometimes that's why people, and this is just my opinion, <laughs> avoid being in quiet times because all of the things that are going on in their head. But if you start pouring in to yourself, positive things, enriching things, then the stuff that comes in your head is actually pretty amazing. Yep. It, and sleep time is the worst time for that. That's when a lot of people agitate over stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, on our next talk, I will happily tell you some of my techniques for getting to sleep. Without. Super. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. They're in the book. Yes. Uh, oh, very good. So good. it is time now for us to share my screen so you can get Carrie's information. All right. So you can go to CarrieCaseyWest.com. That's C-A-R-R-I-E-K-C-W-E-S-T.com. On Facebook, she is Carrie Casey West. On LinkedIn, she is Carrie-West. And there's a number, but if you just do Carrie-West, you'll find her. And on YouTube, you can search by her name. I'm going to let her talk to you a little bit about um, her call to action. Yes, I offer... Um, a free 15 minute call so we can start talking about what it is you're looking to achieve. And I also have on my website access to uh, the chat, the free chapter of my book and a list of, of the four techniques I use to help people quick start their dream life and living their dream going from ordinary to extraordinary. Awesome. 
Well, it has been a pleasure talking with you. You shared some great stories, great information, uh, so much for people to consider and um, rewatch this video to be able to, to get all of those good tips down. As always, I remind everyone that life is a journey and it's up to you to enjoy the ride. This is Vicki Netling signing off. Thank you for tuning into the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Netling, where we share impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Remember to visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast.